We are living in the last of the last days. That means soon we are going to face events that will test our integrity as never before. Yes, now is the time that we need to be alert and decisive. As we face the Great Tribulation, brothers and sisters, we don't know exactly all the details of what will happen. But we do know that Jesus did not mean that we would have to flee one literal city or go to a certain mountain range. How could we? We're scattered over the whole face of the earth. But we do need to remember the same things that the first century Christians needed to remember. Don't put our trust in the religious and political systems of Satan's world. Why is this so vital? Just as in 66 CE, today we see one event after another leading up to the final day. Everywhere there is evidence of political instability and infighting, not only among nations, but also within nations. Religious, political and social issues, including abortion and homosexuality, have become divisive topics. Scientific issues, such as global warming, have also become political issues. Just as in the first century, we must take to heart Jesus' warning. Don't take sides in the chaos that's happening all around us. Yes, keep your focus on the kingdom hope. We've been watching governing body member Jeffrey Jackson taking us through the talk, Be Alert, Be Decisive. This is the first talk on the program for the 2022 annual meeting. I've managed to whittle the talk down to just three parts of interest. Quite frankly, this was a dull talk. Jeffrey Jackson essentially gives a history lesson to his audience in which he seems to be basing much of his material on the writings of Josephus. He takes his audience through the events leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. In particular, he focuses on 66 AD when Roman armies began a siege of Jerusalem and then mysteriously withdrew. At one point, he even quotes verbatim from Josephus, almost as though Josephus is scripture, <laughs> can be considered on a level pegging with the Bible in terms of how reliable it is as a historical source. I'm not sure it's wise to do that with Josephus, or indeed consistent with the organization's position in the past. Josephus is a very useful resource, don't get me wrong, but it's also a little bit strange. For example, Josephus claimed that the remains of Noah's Ark were still in existence in his day and were something of a tourist attraction. <laughs> So, and that's just one example of a number of very interesting claims, shall we say, that Josephus makes. So, for Jeffrey Jackson to essentially cherry pick Josephus as a secular history source that we can trust, while simultaneously dismissing other sources or other historical writers I find to be quite disingenuous. Anyway, you'll have noticed, I'm sure, Jeffrey Jackson beginning his talk with this slogan about the last of the last days. We are living in the last of the last days. Yes, the last of the last days, as was made clear to us, of course, by Stephen Lett when he gave Governing Body Update number one of 2020, Stephen Lett. I'm not going to play you the clip because I've played it many times on this channel. You're all familiar with it, hopefully. But Stephen Lett in said clip told us in March of 2020 that we were in the last of the last days 
shortly before the last day of the last days. So since March of 2020, it's been the last of the last days. I actually went on Watchtower Online Library. I was curious to see whether this phrase came up. And indeed, the earliest it comes up on Watchtower Online Library, bearing in mind you can only go so far back. You can't, for example, go back to the writings of Rutherford or Charles Taze Russell, even though the organization could, if it wanted to, allow you to read those materials and indeed search them. But if you type in, in brackets, last of the last days on Watchtower Online Library, you will find this quote from the 2019 October Watchtower, pages 8 and 9, because so much time has passed since 1914, we must now be living in the last of the last days. So Stephen Lett wasn't the first to coin this phrase. It dates at least to October 2019, which if you think about it, is over three years of it being the last of the last days. <laughs> Surely those words just lose all meaning, don't they? The more time passes after you utter them. If Armageddon had come in 2020 or in 2021, then yes, they would have been the last of the last days. But, you know, when three years and counting have passed, surely we can categorically say that this is just plain fear-mongering. This is just plain doomsday twaddle of the sort that we've heard throughout the organization's history. Jeffrey Jackson has a few things to say about Armageddon and the Great Tribulation and the extent to which Jehovah's Witnesses should be prepared. In fact, I found this particular comment interesting. But we do know that Jesus did not mean that we would have to flee one literal city or go to a certain mountain range. How could we? We're scattered over the whole face of the earth. That's quite an interesting point, Jeffrey. In fact, that's the same point I made in response to the concluding music video of the 2022 convention. To the ends of the earth, there'll be peace at last for all eternity. So in the same year, you have a convention video showing Jehovah's Witnesses fleeing a physical location, going up into the hills or mountains, and <laughs> the same year as they reveal this video at their convention, they hold an annual meeting in which a governing body member says, of course... We won't be required to flee to a mountain range or from one physical location to another physical location because Jehovah's Witnesses are all over the planet. Which is it? <laughs> if that's really the case, what Jeffrey Jackson has just said, then how do we interpret what they showed us at the beginning of the music video, Peace at Last? Why did they go to the trouble of depicting Jehovah's Witnesses fleeing from the destruction at Armageddon? Then you have Jeffrey Jackson walking us through the same old talking points when it comes to proofs that we're in the last days. Everywhere there is evidence of political instability and infighting, not only among nations, but also within nations. Everywhere there is evidence of political instability and infighting, as opposed to that time in human history when there was no political instability, no bickering, no arguing. Everyone just agreed with each other. Do you remember that time? 
in our history lessons <laughs> when everyone was just totally on the same page and everyone just let everyone else get on with whatever they wanted to do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeffrey, you'll have to try harder than that. And the same can be said of these comments. Religious, political and social issues, including abortion and homosexuality, have become divisive topics. Apparently, Jeffrey just has a problem with issues being issues. <laughs> it's evidence that we're in the last days if people care about stuff and if people want to solve problems. What more evidence do you need? People care about the fact that our earth is heating up, that our ocean levels are rising, that there is too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that we are too over-reliant on fossil fuels. How dare they? You know, what a shocking development. <laughs> this sort of thing could only be happening if we're on the brink of the earth being ruled over by Jeffrey Jackson and his friends. What more proof do you need? That's the logic we're being given here. And he says, quote, religious, political and social issues, including abortion and homosexuality, have become divisive topics. I think what you mean is, those were always divisive topics because there have always been people who are against the freedom of women to decide for themselves what they do with their bodies and people who are against the idea of people being free to love whoever they want to love. There have always been those people. It's just that in the past they were in charge, they got to dictate how life should be for everybody else, and now, because of societal progress, the voices who say, that's not on, people should be free to love who they want to love, and women should be free to have a say in what happens with their bodies, those voices are being amplified and developments such as the reversal of Roe versus Wade in the Supreme Court is being met with justifiable outrage. That's not evidence of society moving backwards. That's evidence of society moving forwards. Imagine if Jeffrey Jackson or a person like Jeffrey Jackson had been commenting in the 1950s, he could have said religious, political and social issues, including racism and racial equality, have become divisive topics. He could have just as easily said that, couldn't he, during the civil rights movement. We needed the civil rights movement so that we could begin to tackle racial equality. And racial equality continues to be a problem deep into the 21st century. But the very fact that there is division doesn't mean that the world is getting worse or that things are degenerating. It means that there is healthy debate. It means that the winds of change are blowing and there is hope that things will get better. Whereas in the past, things were only bad, there was only bigotry, there was only racism, there was only slavery, there was only women having to go to backstreet clinics and risk their lives because abortion was against the law. And there was only a world in which people like Alan Turing had to get chemically castrated for the crime of being gay. 